Hello. Today we're going to look at equilibrium, specifically a tax question. So what we're going to do is look at our demand curve, our supply curve, where they meet, and then how a tax affects this equilibrium in this market. To start, it's always helpful to look at a graph. So we have price and quantity. Here's our demand curve. It's downward sloping, starting at a y-axis point of 48 going down to an x-axis point of 24. And then our supply curve starts at the origin and is four times Q. Okay, so conceptually, when we implement a tax into a market, we can think about it as making up a new supply curve to figure out where our new price that buyers pay is located. So if we're looking at this graph conceptually, these points in red will be our initial equilibrium. So this red is our original quantity star and price star. Now with this tax implemented, what we're now seeing is our new price that demanders pay which will be higher given that they have to pay the original price plus some tax. And this will be the price that sellers receive, which will be lower given that they have to give up some amount of tax. Now the burden is going to change depending on the question and the numbers. Um, the demanders, for instance, won't always be paying all of that tax on top of that original equilibrium price. And the suppliers won't be cut out of all of the tax either. So some amount is going to be shared between the two. That's why when we look at the gap between the price that demanders pay and the price that sellers receive, we find the value of the tax itself. That's a little visual example of what's going on. For this question specifically, we don't necessarily need to know this, more so just it's understanding that's important here from this graph. But for the numbers of this question, let's take a look. So what we're going to do is look at the demand curve and the supply curve given to us. And we're going to say this trick that I like to use, which is the price that demanders pay is equal to the price the sellers receive plus the tax, right? So you can also write this as the price that demanders pay minus the tax is equal to the price that sellers receive, right? All we did there was just subtract out the T. So this is always gonna be true, right? The price that demanders pay is equal to the price that sellers receive, plus they're gonna have to add some tax onto um, that original price, right? So with that in mind, we can rewrite our demand and supply curves to be in terms of these PD and PS variables. So it's now the price that demanders pay is equal to this 48 minus 2Q, and the price that sellers receive is equal to 4 times Q. Okay, If we're trying to get the same variables in place so that we can solve for our buyer's price, what we can do is sub in PD minus T for PS here, right? So PD off to the side here, minus six in this case is gonna equal PS, right? That's our value for the tax is that $6. So I'm gonna start out by saying that the price that demanders pay minus six is equal to four Q. And now let's rearrange. So PD equals four Q plus six. Now we have two equations, each with the price that demanders pay and quantity variables. So we can solve for one of them. So let's set these equal to each other over my PD variable, which will leave us with 48 minus 2Q equals 4Q plus six. I'm then going to subtract six from both sides and get 42. 
equals add two Q to both sides, six Q. So my quantity is going to be seven under the tax. And if my quantity is seven, I can plug back into either price the demanders pay equation. I'm just gonna go with this one. And we can say that the price that demanders pay is then 48 minus two times seven, which means that the price that demanders pay is equal to 34. So again, my quantity is seven, my price that demanders pay is 34. That would be 34 right here then, and then a quantity of seven down here, if we're looking at our graph here, and that's going to be option A for this question.